Earlier this week, I spoke to Georgia Dow from I More, who is also a psychotherapist focusing on anxiety. She says in her practice, she's yet to find the killer app for patients recording their moods. But according to Selena Larson from The Daily Dot, that might be changing soon. Welcome, Selena. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Thanks for coming on. So some people might not understand the difference between Apple's year-old research kit and the new care kit. Uh, but the, for those who don't understand, can you give us a little explainer about those two? Yeah, definitely. So Research Kit is a framework for scientists and researchers to be able to build apps that um, connect with patients and they can directly pull data for use in academic studies. Uh, Care Kit is more of a framework for patients, uh, basically that it makes it really easy with these certain modules to implement into apps for um, tracking your care, sharing uh, how you're feeling with your with your caregivers or your friends and family. Um, so essentially the Research Kit is more towards researching and um, and care kit is designed for um, patients and uh, and clinicians. So um, the focus of this particular story is around research kit, which is the more scientific based um, uh, framework that Apple debuted last year. And so tell us about the mood challenge. That's the, the thing that you wrote about. What, what is that? Yeah. So it's a uh, it's a program that's essentially reaching out to or has uh, worked with a lot of uh, different groups who are have submitted proposals for apps and services that harness research kit uh, and as well as other facets of the iPhone and Apple Watch. So that could be the gyroscope or the GPS, things like that, to build apps on top of uh, on top of that that can um, track people's moods from whether that be psychiatric disorders to just general uh, mood throughout the day. And um, they just announced a semifinalist. There were five semifinalists analysts who are um, who have been chosen to kind of pursue and, and further their research. And I talked to a couple of them for this particular story. Um, one was focusing on post-traumatic stress disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder in a partnership with the VA. Uh, that would be aware study. And then BioEffect uh, is a really interesting application that is tracking um, mood disorder in uh, in bipolar disorder. So so how can the accelerometer uh, and the gyroscope, how, how can you use that to, to test for mental health issues? Yeah, so uh, those two things are uh, a lot have to do with um, with movement. For instance, um, AWARE study, which is the PTSD uh, research that um, a group uh, with the VA is doing, they track things like whether a person is leaving their home, which is uh, one of the signs of avoidance. If somebody isn't leaving their home or they're not chatting with friends or they're kind of, you know, withdrawing from the world, they can use uh, the mobile devices and um, things like GPS tracking, movement tracking to determine uh, their behavior, along with, of course, self-reporting feelings. Uh, for instance, one of the uh, facets of the application that they're building is you can select an image that best describes how you're feeling, whether that's, you know, a smiling baby or, you know, a sad kitten, um, kind of, you know, using image association to, to share your feelings. And what's great and what's really unique about um, this particular study, especially for uh, the VA, is that they have not been able to collect data from their suite of apps that already exist for people with post-traumatic stress disorder and post-traumatic stress um, issues. So they are going to be able to use the, the data collected from participants in the study, which is all voluntary, of course, to be able to find out how people want to use apps, how they're engaging um, with their phones and what kind of behavior they can track to potentially predict uh, episodes of um, high stress environment, uh, high stress situations. So, um, so yeah, so they're going to take some of these learnings uh, from the research and apply it to the apps that uh, currently exist. And um, that's one of the one, just one of the uh, semifinalists in the mood challenge. So you talk about, go ahead, Ian. Well, I was just thinking, I mean, how does this deal with false positives? Because, I mean, when you're talking about something as, as, as nebulous as moods, then, you know, getting an app which actually get, does that is, it seems very, very tricky. I'm presuming there's going to be a lot more research to, to work out the efficacy of this software before it's actually rolled out to, to, to you know, live patients. Oh, yes, absolutely. So for instance, uh, in the uh, the other study that's focusing on uh, bipolar disorder, it's called BioEffect. Um, they are actually still doing um, psychiatric visitations with um, clinicians and doctors. So this app uses a third-party keyboard to, to track um, how people are, are talking and, and um, 
their, uh, the way that they're transmitting data. For instance, um, they can tell whether you have deleted words before sending or if you just are sending this, this uh, train of thought directly. Um, and so they are, uh, they have this hypothesis that they can be able to predict um, episodes of bipolar disorder based on uh, your behavior with your phone and the, the ways that you're communicating. So the folks that are currently participating in, um, in an initial study that they're running on Android right now are still seeing uh, clinicians, you know, follow Following up to be able to, to check in with them and, and to see if these hypotheses are correct. Ultimately, what everyone is hoping is that these apps will be able to scale to larger audiences um, and, and sort of have this predictive nature to it. Um, and as well as uh, the, the PTSD app, the AWARE study, um, that is just um, obviously going to be run on a, a trial. It's like a small group of people. It's not going to be an app that rolls out to a larger group. It's going to be taking facets of this research and applying it to apps that currently exist um, and kind of determining what best helps patients. So what you're saying is it's not going to determine if someone has bipolar disorder, but with bi bipolar disorder, the issue is when, uh, when are you going to have a manic episode? And so this would say, okay, and you know, the person, the patient, as well as their family would like to know that. And sometimes that's when the harm uh, happens when you don't know that it's happening. So it, you'd be able to tell it by their typing, their accelerometer, uh, things in the, the gyroscope in their phone. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. So obviously, this none of this is, is used for diagnosis purposes whatsoever. Um, all of it is is patients who are already currently seeing clinicians or or seeing folks for for these kinds of disorders, um, and it, it's more a kind of understanding, having a greater understanding of how we can actually use mobile technology to better understand our mental wellness. Because currently, there are so many things on the market, right? We have wearables for fitness. You use your phone for step tracking and calorie counting and all of these sort of um, physical attributes that we can track with our smartphones and there is some it's like still very nascent um there's there's some wearables that are, are kind of targeting this like mental health and wellness area um but with research kit it's more focusing on these this more like clinical efforts so to be able to understand our mental health and well-being and be able to use what's on our phone to take care of our mental wellness the same way that we take care of our physical wellness. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. And um, there haven't been that many studies done with Research Kit. It's still a fairly new. Um, and uh, one of the um, one of the studies that was recently released, they actually released some of their data. Uh, it's an app called Empower. Um, and it, it uh, does research into Parkinson's disease. So similar, uh, using the the facets that come on your phone automatically, um, a lot of these sensors that are built right into the phone, they analyze um, daily changes and symptoms of folks that have Parkinson's disease. And so they've compiled this anonymized data and are releasing it to the public in this open source format to be able to say, this is a study that we're running. These are some of the things that we're investigating and these are our results. And what I think is really interesting is the research kit by nature is open source and all of the study participants in the mood challenge, uh, all of their proposals are required to be open source as well. So you have these uh, really forward thinking researchers that are building apps and services on top of Apple's um, products that are going to be able to open source uh, th this technology and some of their research just to say, you know, this is how we built it. This is how we did it. Um, and eventually, ultimately, when the studies are concluded, uh, the anonymized data from people who have volunteered or who have elected to participate in these studies uh, is going to be available for uh, clinical researchers to, to better understand um, PTSD and bipolar disorder.